is it possible after a neurologic injury to be making progress and at the same time feel like your movement is getting worse? Absolutely. And it is one of the most frustrating things that I see in neurologic recovery. And that is what we're going to go over in today's video. Why is it that you're making progress, but you feel like your movement quality is getting worse? In this video, you're going to learn why this happens, why this is potentially a good sign, and how to measure your progress appropriately so that you're selecting the right exercises that are actually making your movement quality better and not worse. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tara. I'm a neurologic physical therapist with over 22 years of experience helping people after neurologic injuries to restore their mobility and their independence. And I've taken everything I've learned over those 22 years and I've put them into a software system that will allow you to take full ownership of your rehab and really take your recovery to the next level. More than that, you can do it on your own terms, not being reliant on when your prescription renews or when you get more physical therapy benefits or when a physical therapist has time to fit you back into their schedule. You are in full control of where you go from this point forward in your recovery. And that is all part of our Rehab HQ membership program. If you want to learn more about our membership program or to sign up, you can visit rehab-hq.com. Or if you're not really sure which program is best for you, you can schedule a discovery call to talk to someone in person about the things that you're struggling with and your goals, and they can help you to make a decision on which program is best for you. But now back to today's video and a very common question slash concern that comes up quite frequently in the comments. And it is some variation of, I feel like I'm getting stronger, but my movement is really inconsistent or I feel like there are days when I just can't move at all, either because I have a heavy leg or a stiff leg, or I fatigue too quickly when I'm walking. All of these come down to a very foundational concept in neural recovery, and that is understanding the difference between strength and motor control. So what do I mean by that? After a neurologic injury, specifically a stroke, you've had damage to the main operating system. Now, if you've been around for a while, I know you've heard me say that before, so stick around because there are gonna be things in this video that I've not discussed before on this channel that I'm going through the patient currently that I think will be extremely valuable. But just as a review, you've had a stroke, neurons in your brain, a neural network that controls a specific movement pattern has been damaged. That is why immediately following a stroke, you can't move one arm or one leg. Now, although it may appear that you can't move your arm or your leg because the muscle is weak and won't let it move, it is very, very important to understand that that is not what is causing your arm to just hang there. In your words, some of you describe as just having a dead arm. But all we know from our previous experiences before we've had a stroke is that when we can't lift a certain load, we can't lift the grocery bag or we can't bench press the amount we wanna bench press, that we're not strong enough. So before your stroke, many of you, you go into the gym, if you've ever had this experience before your stroke, and you just lift more weight. You develop the strength so that you can increase that bench press or lift that child from their crib, right? There was a very specific formula that you followed based on the fact that you recognized you had a weak muscle. That is not what is going on after a stroke. The hard drive has been damaged. The function codes are no longer functional. The keys on the keyboard still work, i.e. your muscles but the hard drive has been wiped clean, metaphorically speaking. Your brain hasn't been wiped clean, but just trying to keep that metaphor going, right? Something has been wiped off the hard drive. And herein lies the problem or where many of you 
kind of deviate off of a neuro course or plan and revert back to what you know. And that is strengthen, strengthen, strengthen. You think that if you just lift more weight, lift more weight, that that muscle is going to get stronger and your movement is going to feel more normal again. But different from prior to your stroke, when you've had injuries in the past, strengthening is not going to improve the neural circuit or rebuild that code on the hard drive. And the harder you try to strengthen, 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 what you're actually doing is you're reinforcing a movement pattern that kind of is what our brain defaults to when part of the hard drive has been wiped out. Many of you have heard this before, and that's either spasticity or abnormal synergy patterns. So what happens at this point as to why some of you feel like you're getting stronger, but you feel like your movement quality or you feel like movements are just the same difficulty or even more difficult than they were at the beginning? It's because these primitive patterns are bubbling up to the surface and you're just strengthening those primitive patterns. These are what we call abnormal movement patterns. And the harder you try or the more you strengthen it, the more you're going to reinforce these abnormal movement patterns or compensatory patterns. These are adaptive mechanisms that our brains have built in. And you are rewiring. We just call this negative neuroplasticity. You are rewiring around a movement pattern that is not ideal. So with abnormal synergy patterns, muscles and joints are linking up together abnormally. So although your arm is moving more, it only moves in one direction, right? And so when you try and carry that new movement that you're seeing, that new strength that you're seeing over into daily activities and the arm doesn't do that, it's frustrating. So that's where there's this discrepancy between I feel like I'm getting stronger, but I feel like movements are getting harder to do. You're strengthening. You're just strengthening a neural network that is not optimal for normalizing movement. So now here's the main point of this video. How do you turn that strength training that you're doing into a motor control activity? One is, and this isn't really a motor control activity, but it's extremely important when it comes to rebuilding normal or rebuild those old normalized movement patterns back onto the hard drive is sensory input, touching, tapping, rubbing your kind of, this is kind of something that you might be able to relate to and it's a loose analogy, but you know when toddlers are just kind of like laying on their back and they're just staring at their limbs? It's kind of like you're just making the brain aware that there are, is an arm and a leg over there and that you're reconnecting that arm and leg with your brain. Different from a toddler or an infant who's kind of staring at their arms and kind of very mesmerized by how their hands and legs are moving, you're reintroducing your brain to that arm and that leg. So again, tapping, passive range of motion, we call this like kind of a bottom up approach. So there's top down mechanisms that are absolutely important for that neural re rewiring. But if you can incorporate some bottom up mechanisms, that is the magic combination. So passive range of motion is what we call kind of like a bottom up approach or intervention. So sensory input, I like vibration, a massage gun, the vibe plate. I've done a video recently on the science or the evidence that supports a vibration plate after a stroke. I will link that study in the description below, as well as the vibration plate that I use with their uh, patients that I see in person, as well as the massage gun that I use. That's all sensory input, just kind of bringing that arm and that leg back online, getting that brain, building that brain's awareness of that arm and leg. Number two, and this is controversial, so you will get different answers from this depending on what therapist you're talking to. No one is wrong. I'm just basing this on my own experiences and what's worked with the patients that I've seen in person. Prioritize quality over quantity. 
So, so many people ask me like, what are some good strengthening exercises I do? I have dumbbells at home. I have wrist weights. I have ankle weights. My suggestion is your goal should be more focused on making that movement look the same on the involved side and the uninvolved side. So a couple of movements that I pay very close attention to with patients that I see in person is when we're working on reaching, I don't want to see the arm internally rotate. That is tapping into an abnormal synergy pattern. Okay, so see one arm you can lift and it doesn't internally rotate. And then when you go to this arm, the involved arm it internally rotates. That's a sign that we need to step back a little bit and really focus on isolated shoulder flexion without internal rotation. That's just an example, but it is very, very common that people see that arm move and they get so excited that they just work it harder and harder and harder. And they're just getting more and more. They're reinforcing that abnormal synergy pattern more and more every time they do that. The other one is grip. People get super, super excited when they enclose their hand. That is an abnormal synergy pattern or spasticity or both. Spasticity is an involuntary muscle contraction. It's not necessarily motor control. So if you are going to work on closing your hand, your thumb needs to be on the outside of your fingers. Very, very important. If it's tucking in or you're getting this, stop that activity, back up, make that activity easier. But what I suggest more is that you work on extension. Many, many, many of you are not going to have a problem flexing your fingers. Reason being is there's a lot of spasticity that occurs in the muscles that flex the fingers and the wrist. You don't really need to work on grip. If you are going to work on grip, if you cannot put your thumb on the outside of your fingers, you are just reinforcing a pattern. So those would be two of the very, very important ones that I would work on in the upper extremity. Now, this is just a little side note, a little hack, but if you want to work on extension, I don't know the mechanism behind this as to why this works, but if you pull the thumb out to the side, typically the muscles on the inside of the hand relax. So if you're going to work on finger extension, try and hold your thumb out to the side and have your elbow supported. That's not really the point of this video, but since I am talking about like how to do like quality movement, that would be if you're trying to get those fingers open, that's what I would focus on. I'd have your wrist flexed. I talked about this a ton, but I think it's worth bringing up anytime I talk about the hand. You've got to start working with the wrist flexed down for finger extension. When the wrist is up, there's just more tension on these muscles down here, and it's going to be much harder to get those fingers open. So hand down, pulling that thumb out to the side, that's where you want to start. That's a quality movement right there. Okay, so those would be two quality movements in the upper extremity. Now, when it comes to the lower extremity, if you go to stand on your leg and your leg locks out, there is a good chance, generally speaking, that that is an abnormal synergy pattern. So what can you do to do a quality movement of the leg? Work on loading the leg without letting your knee lock out. That's kind of breaking up a synergy pattern. The other one is working on laying on your stomach and bending your knee, bringing your heel to your bottom. Those are the two movements that when someone can master those, I know their walking quality is going to dramatically improve because those are out of synergy patterns. And the unfortunate thing about leg movements is you get up and you start walking day one in therapy. You can't go to the bathroom and sit on a regular toilet, which is very, very important to a lot of people, <laughs> um, me included, if I were in that situation, I would want to be able to walk to the bathroom or at least stand and pivot onto a normal toilet. You cannot do that without using your legs. So you start potentially reinforcing some of those abnormal synergy patterns very, very early on in recovery, and they're very hard to break. So the one that is kind of the turning point in a lot of people's walking is when I know their walking is going to smooth out is if you can lay on your stomach and you can bring your heel to your bottom. The other critical one is if you're working on lifting your ankle up, like bringing your foot up, dorsiflexing, can you do that with your knee straight? If you can do it, but your knee is bent, that's kind of an abnormal synergy pattern. 
and you want to kind of move beyond that, okay, and start working on that quality movement, that would be another one I would focus on. Ankle dorsiflexion with knee extension. The next tip I would give to move away from strengthening and more into motor control would be to break skills down. Now, this is controversial, and this is not going to be effective for everyone. There are times when you want to work an entire skill together as one whole movement, but there are times where it is helpful, especially if you've been strengthening for a while, to kind of break a skill down into smaller parts if you want your movement to feel more normal and less taxing. So for walking, I'd work on the standing phase of walking and the swinging phase of walking separately. And I have tons of videos on this channel. I will put a playlist for an entire series that I did on gait and all the gait deviations and how to break those movements down to work on the specific mo abnormal movement patterns that you might be experiencing. So I'll put that card up in the corner here. If you want to break down walking and work on it in, it, in its specific components and move away from strength training. A strength training activity that is very, very common. I don't know where you guys get this information, but that squats are very valuable or lunges or glutes. Glute training is the reason that you're walking the way that you do. So many people are doing a lot of strength training for their glutes or, you know, they're doing a lot of squats. A better activity would be to break down the skill that you're actually working on, i.e. walking and identify which part which phase in the walking cycle you're having the most problems with and break that phase of the walking cycle down even further. And again, that card that I'm going to put up in the corner, that is an entire series that I did on gait abnormalities and how to break those skills down to rebuild them back with a more normalized movement pattern. And then the last one, and this applies to so many people, and I don't stress this enough on this channel. If you want to improve your walking, walk. I have a couple of patients right now that have been following me for quite a while on YouTube and they're now seeing me in person and they're very fixated on like what is the specific drill I need to be doing and in these scenarios their strokes are a little bit further out and honestly I don't have a drill for them. The only drill is walk walk more. They're not walking enough. They're spending too much time focused on finding the perfect exercise to make their walking better when they're really their main issue is they're just not walking enough. So in many cases, neurophysical therapy is not rocket science. It is, I can't do this skill. So what do you have to do to get that skill better? Do the skill. We didn't give drills to infants. We don't give drills to toddlers. What do we do? We just keep setting them on their feet, set them on their feet, <laughs> set them on their feet. And eventually they learn that staying on their feet is far more fun than plopping down on their bottom. And over time that gets better. Now, of course, as adults, we fall a lot further. We can't necessarily do that. And there is a time and a place, like I just mentioned, to break a skill down. But 90% of you need that last piece of advice that I just gave, which is just walk. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. This is the difference between strengthening and motor control, and it could be the missing link in your rehab and really upgrade your recovery to make movements feel easier. So I hope you give it a try. Don't forget, if you really want to go a little bit deeper and you really want full ownership of your rehab and your recovery, you definitely want to check out our membership program. Again, to learn about all of the perks of the different membership levels, to sign up or to schedule a discovery call with someone who can talk to you in person about your goals and whether or not our program is right for you, you can visit rehab-hq.com. I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.